video. I'm sorry I've been, it's been crazy getting ready here for the winter. And you can see I got a, got my get some winter beard going on. You see how old I am with all this gray going on down here. But I hope you all have been good. I, I, I love interacting with everybody on, on Instagram. And uh, crazy, hit 5,000 followers. Like I said before, I never really thought that would happen. Um, but it just keeps getting better, more fun. I don't think I, I've ever asked for a shout out or anything. It's just all, it's all, you know, based on good conversations with, with, with y'all. So, um, anyway, there's so much to talk about. The Willie Stargell Foundation Dinner, which I posted a picture of, which was amazing. And obviously, Kentucky taking down Duke was awesome, even though it really doesn't matter for either team. Uh, it's not like it's going to affect the seeding of Duke to lose Kentucky in the third game or if we had lost to them. But I love that early season college basketball atmosphere, the Champions Classic. I've been a couple times. And um, it's Michigan State, Kansas, Kentucky, and Duke every year. And they they bring the fans, obviously, and it is just fantastic. And I'm very excited for the next month which I posted before, but um, I get to go and uh, do a meet and greet with Carmelo Anthony. And I'm having the worst time trying to figure out what to get signed. I get to get three things signed. And I don't know. I was thinking about doing an, an Oak Hill jersey, a Syracuse jersey, and a Knicks jersey. But then I was thinking, oh, man, do I do a Christmas Day Knicks jersey because it's near Christmas? And then what about a USA jersey? What about a pair of Mellow Jordans? <sighs> I, I got to figure it out fast. But... What a blessing to be able to win that auction and do that. And then uh, going to the Kentucky-Ohio State game and the Barclays Center on December 19th. And staying the next night for the Timberwolves versus the Nets. And I'm with a buddy of mine who is good friends with Carl Towns. We get to stay after and meet uh, Towns. So getting to meet Mello and Towns in the same month. It's a lot of fun stuff ahead. I cannot wait. I absolutely cannot wait. But um, interestingly, I thought I'd show you all this. So for the older folks that got to sit next to the girl from Pale Rider who signed a DVD for me, these are pretty distinct. Um, but that was awesome at the Stargell Foundation. But this is what I'm excited about. the In honor of Halo 5 coming out, I absolutely love this. This is It's a long story how it came to this, but... This is a copy of Halo 4 signed by a guy named Frank O'Connor. He drew a little Master Chief, which is awesome. And um, I've been a gamer forever. And when I was a high school teacher, I used to game with my students. There's something therapeutic about, you know, taking down a couple guys that might have been a, a little rowdy in class. But it was, uh, I've always just loved gaming. I've always loved it. And especially when I got hurt and was going through a lot of my surgeries and stuff that I went through that I've told some of y'all about. Um, it was it was just a great release. So I've always kept that. So um, long story short, knew the guy, got to know the guy that directed the Halo movie, Halo Forward Unto Dawn with the real live action people instead of uh, digital stuff. And uh, he found out I was a huge fan of the franchise and, got that for me so with halo 5 out i'm digging it i'm an old school campaign guy i like really hard i mean i play multiplayer and love that but i'm a campaign guy so frank o'connor is in charge of the entire halo universe so i'm gonna eventually get that frame but the big stuff let's get back to cards is i posted a picture of this but the last video i talked about getting a book like this from the bookstore the team you love in college and you can see Oh, this is what I love to do for Kentucky stuff. I probably have got some thicker binders than this. I just put a thin one for um, the contender stuff. Got a blue one. Know where everything is. Get your towns, get your Stein, your Booker, all that good stuff. And um, it's just a great way to know where stuff is. Probably got six or seven really thick Kentucky bookstore binders together. And you can order them online if you're not near the bookstore. And I know they make them for pro teams too. But it's a great way to do it. And then uh, I really thought the contender stuff turned out beautiful. I've, I'm obviously a huge fan because I just adore all things college. So 
I've posted most of these, but the two D'Angelo Russell cracked ice. I can't believe that. I mean, I bought a ton, but this was right down my alley. And then Porzingis autos. I think I really love to meet him in New York. Um, but really loving going back to what I've said before about the focus. I love the college game, and for a long time, only collected the stuff. Some of the older folks will remember Star Pick, Classic, Scoreboard, genuine article that had the only stuff that had guys in their college uniforms. Um, so really, when that went away, and then this stuff came out, and you're only dealing with some upper deck, but upper deck couldn't get didn't have both the college license and the NBA license, so they couldn't do every player. This is just the best. So now my focus, I'm trying to figure out, do I go for a set of each Kentucky player, cracked ice, numbered, printing plates if I can, base autos of each Kentucky player? Or do I I've got to wait and see, you know, I know that Prism has, you know, Towns and Stein and all those guys in their college jerseys and their pro jerseys. Do I try? It's the fun of collecting. I got to figure that out. What, what route do I take? So that gets into the collecting stuff because I've had people say, well, do you want to trade for this and trade for that? And every time I post a, a, a good card, um, how much, you know, I get that all the time, how much, um, do you want you want to trade all these different things? I want to explain on that. I always I hate disappointing people and saying, "No, look, I'm sorry." One, I, I don't want this account to ever seem like it's for a purpose for personal gain. That that's not it. I'm so blessed beyond. I mean, I worked hard for all this stuff. I've had people send stuff. This is not about me getting more. I don't. I, that, that's not it. That, it really isn't. Um, so it, it's a, it's about the joy of collecting, which I've talked about a little bit. And I've told some people this, but I love to fall in love with a deal, but I've tried to be careful about falling in love with dealing. So if you're a dealer, that's totally different. And there's nothing wrong with falling in love with dealing. But I collect, um, I've had people ask me, you know, why I do this? I don't collect to flip, and I don't think there's anything wrong with flipping. That's great. But for the younger collectors, I think sometimes they fall in love with that transaction. And that's when you see guys saying, oh, I, I gave up all my Porzingis autos too early. Because they just got on a roll, and they were, tra they were just doing trades and deals and deals and deals and deals. And I really think that's where that focus part of the year collection comes in where we're even the dealers I know have something that they really love you know Big Hurt loves Frank Thomas and Chris Sale and he does that on the side and then he's a dealer you know 90% of the time but he's always got that on the side and so if you're trading if you're a collector and you kind of want that museum type which was always my goal I wanted this to have this sports museum where I could see and remember and see memories and understand that. It's not about the transactions. So then you got to think, well, what type of collector do I want to be? What's the, what's the best possible situation, right? What's the goal? And to me, when I was younger and my collection didn't look like this, and it didn't look like this in my 20s and my 30s, and I've said this before, but, you know, what's the best possible scenario? The best possible scenario in my mind, was can I get to a point where I don't have to trade something I love to get something I'd like? Do I, can I get to a point where I can give a lot away? Can I get to a point where I feel like my collection is, is, is good enough that even though I see things I want, of course, you always are. Like I said, you can never have all the cards. But can I get to the point where I love my collection so much that I don't need anything. You know, you see that all the time. Need, want, you know, and all this. But that, when you get in that position, especially if you've fallen in love with dealing and you feel like you need this card more than life and all this, and, you know, it happens with the younger collectors. I was the same way. Then, then you automatically put yourself in a bad position for trading, right? Now, this gets into business sense, and the older guys going to know this. 
But if you're willing to do anything for this card, a shysty dealer will take advantage of you. And if you're over-aggressively like, oh my gosh, i got to have it. What do you want? What do you want? Well, then you're going to give up more for it. If you can say, hey, I love that card. It's really cool. But, you know, i got a lot of great Anthony Davis or Michael K. Gilchrist or Carl Towns. So I, I'm good right now. I appreciate it. Well, then, then you know, then the deal might present itself, and you can fall in love with that deal. But if you just value dealing all the time, all the time, then you're more apt to look back and say, man, I shouldn't have traded that. Man, I shouldn't have sold that. Man, I shouldn't have done that. Again, it makes it sound like that's bad. That is not what I'm saying. And if you have something you really want and love, like... I do it all the time. I sell really good cards to go get stuff I love more. I sold great Kobe Bryant's. Great Kobe Bryant's. Of three signed, super rare stuff. But that's because my focus isn't Kobe Bryant. I've got a few of his autos. I'm good. So, being able to say that was something I wanted to get to a point in my collection with. Which is, I can say, alright. I definitely would like that car. If I don't get it, it's not the end of the world. And on guys like Porzingis, D'Angelo Russell, Stanley Johnson, some of these guys that were waiting to kind of check out, like they did with Steph Curry, the same thing. You know, this card that everybody likes to do in auto is a great card. Steph Curry RPA. I mean, sell for like 5000 now. You know, pulled that card out of a $200 box of the Leaf Best of Basketball. Had some offers for five hundred or a thousand more, and he was starting to play well. And I was like, you know, I don't need to sell this for five hundred right now. That's a lot of money. It's a great thing. It was a fair offer at the time, but all right. So in that same sense, when people say, "Well, you got four D'Angelo Russells," I do, and I'm going to wait and see. He's not getting the PT right now, and I'm in a position in my collecting life where I can. Um, doesn't mean I won't trade it or sell it later. Probably will. I don't need that many. I might give it away. That's the thing. I might just give it to somebody who needs it, um, in my opinion. But I just don't want to fall in love with, with the dealing as much because that's not my focus. And I think it's a good place to be, especially for the younger guys, just to make them think about it, remember that. Um, let's see what else. Oh, and it goes back to worth and value. I get that a lot too. What's this worth? What do you think that's worth? Should I buy this for this? Well, why do you want it? You know, are you buying it to flip it? Then you really got to get into what are the comps? What are the other values? Can I get my money back? But if it's uh, I remember taking to meet some people like you pay too much for this Willie Cauley Stein packs. It's like 50 bucks and Probably wasn't worth that to somebody looking to flip, but it was worth it to me to get it in-house. It was the Adidas patch from the combine. I wanted that. I love that patch. So I would pay more than what a really call a style patch would go for at that time. But it's the, the point is it's worth what someone will pay for it. I sold a Kobe Bryant for $3,500. I didn't think it was worth that, and nobody else did. But I put it up on eBay. It was gone in five minutes. Five minutes because somebody – valued that that much so that being said i i talked on instagram earlier about comc.com which i love i love that site because i sent a 3500 cards of mine that aren't worth as much to me sentimentally these all are these have values beyond dollars so it's not worth it to me to trade something in here or sell it some of these are like $40 cards. Okay, so I sell it to you for $40 card, for 40 bucks. Fair deal. Or you offer me something fair. All right, I got 40 bucks. This is not where I am. I don't need the 40 bucks to go out and get some. If I do, then maybe I'll sell it. But COMC allowed me to take all those cards, some of great value, and send them in to, and it stands for checkoutmycards.com, COMC.com. And so I sent 3,500 cards in. I put the link in the bio. So you guys can look through them, and uh, there you go. I like it because it's not an auction, and it's just a price. Though you can still make an offer, and I can either accept it or decline it because I think somebody else will buy it. It also puts your cards on Amazon. You have to take a 20% hit 